Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how to extract data out of CSV files with the ops inside of cables. So what is a CSV file? CSV stands for comma separated values. So imagine you would just have a text file with a bunch of words and a bunch of numbers and other values, and you'd put a comma in between them. That comma would separate those values, basically. So if you want to know more about that, you can just read up about it on Wikipedia. I'll follow the rest of this tutorial and it'll make sense in no time. So first of all, to extract data, we need some data. So I went to this webpage, data.gov, and as we can see, we've got over 23,000 data sets here. Um, so now I'm going to click on popular baby names because we want to keep it a little bit joyful today. And as we can see here, popular baby names by sex and ethnic group data were collected through civil birth registration. Now, I'm just interested in the data. So here we see comma separated value files. So I'm going to click download. As you can see, there's other data file formats here, XML, JSON, RDF, but we're just going to keep it simple with CSVs. So I'm going to click download. Um, and as you can see, I've already downloaded it there. So I've just got it to my desktop, but you just download that to your computer. So I want to show you in um, Google Spreadsheet how this works, because maybe you'd find a data set which is in a different format than CSV, but you want to convert it to CSV. So I'm going to click File, Import, and I'm going to click on Upload. Now I'm going to say Select a file from my device. And here I'm going to pick the CSV file, Popular Baby Names. I'm going to click Open. Now I want to replace the current spreadsheet. I know that the separator type is a comma. Maybe somebody used a different symbol. Do I want to convert text to numbers, datas, and formulas? No. Import data. So let's just give it a minute. Boom. So you don't see the commas now, but the commas were used to separate these values from each other. So as you can see, uh, we've got these um, columns here, year of birth, gender, ethnicity, child's first name, count, and rank. And there's a huge amount of information here. And it looks like it's been sorted, but it actually hasn't. As we can see, um, a lot of stuff there is kind of mixed up, but the beginning 2011 is all together. So it can take a while to go through data and analyze it and get what you want out of it. But this is gonna be our data set for today. But let's say that um, you had a different file format and you wanted to export this as a CSV file to using cables. You just go to file, download, common separated values, and it would now convert whatever spreadsheet you had into a CSV file that cables could understand. I'm just going to click cancel though. So let me get rid of this. So I downloaded that CSV file to my computer. So I'm going to press F11 and go to full screen. I'm now going to type in CSV and we want the CSV array up here. Pass CSV files as an array. So I'm going to click add. Okay. So we need to get the CSV file in there. So I press F11, I go to my um, file browser, and here I have the popular baby names CSV file. I'm gonna click and track that here, and I upload it into cables. So here's the original CSV file, and here's the converted JSON file. And this is the one that we're interested in. So I'll press escape, and we now go to the file browser here, and we click this icon, and we click the JSON file. As we can see, it's now been successfully loaded. So F11 to full screen. Now I'm going to use the inspect icon here. Be warned, if you've got a data set with maybe 100,000 or 200,000 or more um, points uh, inside of the array, more, more data, uh, if your computer doesn't have enough memory, you could crash the browser. Um, so this is 19,418. So I'm going to click inspect. Cables will just need a moment or two. And here we go. Now we see the data in a different format than we did in the Google spreadsheet. So here we see the symbol uh, for an array because it's an array of CSV data. So it's been converted into a JSON file, which is why we have these um, objects here. And as you can see, we've now got year of birth, gender, ethnicity, child's first name, count and rank. And we have a comma here, which separates the values. Hence the term CSV, comma separated values. So I'm going to close this. And let's just say now that I want to get um, all of um, one kind of piece of data out of there. So once again, if I click inspect, let's say that I want to see all the child's first name entries only. I'm going to select this, do control C. 
And we've got a really handy um, op for this. So I'm going to type in get values from an array of objects. And I'm going to click add. So now it needs a key. So these were keys. So this is a key, child's first name. And if I now click the inspect um, icon, I don't get all of the CSV data now. All I get is everything that is linked to child's first name, as you can see here. That's all there together. So I could now go back to this. I could click inspect. And I could say ethnicity. And I could paste that in here and click inspect. And as you can see, if I go down and down, we start getting a mix of different data types here. Great. Okay. So that's basically how we get um, everything from that index. But I'm just going to disconnect this for a moment by shaking. So what I want to do now is a lot of the time you're going to want to sort um, data inside of, um, of an array, basically. So we've got a really good op for that. So I'm going to type in sort array. And it's this one that we're interested in. Sort an array of objects by key. So don't forget those are objects inside of an array there. So I'm going to click add. So this is a really smart op. Um, it will know if you're working with a string, which is like a bunch of characters and text, or a number. So now let's say, if I go back to this, let's say now that I want to sort everything by rank. Because as you can see here, the ranks are not sorted. It's 75. Um, 67, um, 77, 66, 21. So let's say I'd want to sort everything inside of there by rank. So I'm just going to double click this, control C, because it is case sensitive. And I'm now going to type in here rank. And I say sort ascending. I'm going to click inspect. Give it a moment. And now, as we can see, everything has rank one. So everything is now sorted according to um, the values inside of rank. So this is a really great way to sort the data in a way that's meaningful to you. You could have a bunch of numbers and you could say, I want to see it from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So we just sorted um, this array of objects now. So now we want to just kind of like visualize it. Okay. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to plug this in there. And now I'm going to grab um, the year of birth. I want to just show a couple of things here with text on the screen. So I'm going to say, OK, let's grab year of birth. Control C. I'm going to put that here. Oh, little mistake there. Year of birth. And as you can see, this popped up to show me I've got it. I'm going to zoom out a little touch. And I'm just going to copy paste this one a few times. There's four pieces of um, data that I want to get. So let me move this over here. And this just gets connected to all of them now, because that's the array with everything in it that's been sorted. So the next thing I want to grab is the child's first name. So I click this. So now I'm going to copy paste oh, child's first name. And I'm going to put that here. And now I want to get the, um, the rank. That's one word. And I'm going to type in count. And as you can see, array here is on zero because it says, oh, there's nothing there. It's not going to fill up with data until it matches. So now I have the year of birth, child's first name, rank, and the count. So let's say I want to get something out of this array. Well, we've got text and numbers, and there was a reason for this. So here I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to type in array get number. It returns a value from an array. So as we can see um, here, index zero is 2011. If I type in um, 2000, it's 2016. So what it's doing is it's going through this array. And this is index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four, and so on up until the end of the array. So um, I have this number there. That's great. But I want to convert it and show it as some text here. So I just want to check that my data is correct. So I'm going to make a main loop. Let's zoom in the touch. I'm going to grab a transform up. And now I'm going to grab a text mesh up. So if we want to show um, text with the text mesh, we need to give it the data type string. This is a number. And as you can see, this has a different color. It's not going to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to type in number to string. 
As we can see, this number now has these quotation marks, which shows that it's a string. Now, just to test it's working, I'll plug it into here, the text. There we go. And if I would now jump around, as you can see, we're looking up um, data from different places. But I want to put multiple strings together. So let's get this. And now let's create the concat object. This joins two strings together. So here, I'm now going to type in year of birth. And as you can see, I put a space at the end there. And this number to string goes in. And as you can now see, we have the year of the birth and number. So we're almost there. Don't worry, this is just a little bit of string stuff. It doesn't get much more complicated than this. And now I'm going to grab the concat multi, join multiple strings together, because I want to show more than this. So now I'm going to plug this in here. And everything's a bit big, so I'll click on Transform. And I'm just going to reduce the scale to, say, 0 0.3. So we can now repeat what we just did here for the rest. Seems like a lot of work, but it's actually nice and simple. So um, this returns a string already, but we need, uh, sorry, it returns uh, an array. So we need to get the string from it. So now we do array get string. So it's not a number. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to make another concat. And if I remember correctly, this was child's first name. So the first part of the string here is going to be child's first name. And now I want to get this string here, where we have the name. I'm just going to plug it into the second one. I'm going to plug this here. And now you see everything that comes along the line. So we just go to concat multi and we click new lines. There we go. Can you see where we're going with this? Nice and easy. So here we have um, also a string. So we can just do the same thing again. We copy paste, we're getting that array, we're passing it into array get a string. And we now know that this is the rank. So I'm going to type in rank. And visualizing data, uh, it is a little bit of work, but it's worth it in the end. There we go, rank. And this one was count, and this was a number. So we're just going to use this part again here. We're going to copy paste it. We're going to put that there. And this was, let me just check, count. OK, so let's put this on count. Great. And we're going to put this here. As you can see, we've now got the very first entry from here. Um, so let's just check this. So 2014, Isabella 140. So if we go here and we click this, Um, ah, okay, sorry, this is going to be incorrect because we sorted um, it. We're looking at the first um, index. So let's just do this. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to grab the number up. And what this is is the index that we're looking up. So by plugging this into, the, into all of these, um, we're now going to look everything up at the same time. So if we go here to zero, there we go. Year of birth, 2011. Let's check this. We're looking at uh, index 1000, uh, not uh, index zero. So here we go. Year of birth, 2011. Um, Isabella, count 331, rank one. So that was my mistake. This was um, still on 1000, not on zero. So I can now scroll through um, different values inside of the array. So if I want to see what's at 1001, or 1002, 1003, 1004, and they're all sorted um, by rank. So this is just a really quick, easy way to access um, this data. And doing something meaningful with data, um, that's something different. Um, there's a lot of uh, research methods and web pages and organizations which um, translate data into something visually. And this, of course, is a really simple thing that we did now because you've got to start simple before you can go complicated. This is just showing you how to access um, data inside of a CSV file and how to represent it as a string. So there's a lot of things you could do from here. You could extract the, the rank and the count. You could sort it. You could um, put it to a mesh instancer with different size shapes. You could put it on a spline. You could make um, 
uh, an overglorified pie chart. Um, thank you, Stefan, uh, for that one. Uh, there's a lot of ways that we can do something with this data. So that's pretty much wrapping up this part of the tutorial, but I'm just going to press F11 and I'm just going to show you one or two things that could be done with this kind of stuff. So we gave um, a workshop at uh, Katowice, I hope I say that correctly, where there were 81 uh, measuring stations in the city which measured how much air pollution was um, in different regions. So here we have, um, if you click the CSV array, this is from uh, station 100 and it measured the data over 28 days. So here we have the station ID, the time, which is actually the day. So this is like the first day, second day and so on. Minimum value, max value, these all have to do with um, the amount of pollution in the air. And we even have latitude and longitude, which we can cover in another tutorial, like where we are in the world. So this was all the data for 28 days. So we got that data and we mapped it here to a simple spline with points. So this is day zero, this is day 28. Um, and this might not look so meaningful, but what happens if you start analyzing this data, say over a year, maybe you'll see spikes in the summer or spikes in the winter. Maybe you can correlate that with some other kind of data. So this example file um, will also be available um, with this tutorial. As you can see, we've got a lot of comments here, a lot of instructions of how this was created. It's a great way to just learn how to get CSV data and map it out numerically to a very um, simple kind of graph. It's going to press F11 and here we, um, we visualize the data um, in two different ways. So first of all, we got um, an SVG file, which is a bunch of points. Uh, and we used those points to draw this outline here from Katowice. And then we got that data uh, from all of the measuring stations and we got the latitude and longitude, which is the position on, um, on the globe, on, on that city, on that map of where each station was. And then basically the higher each sphere was, the higher the pollution and the lower it was, the better. So basically if a sphere was on the floor, there was no pollution. If it was even this high, that was pretty bad. So as you can see, when this data was measured, Katowice had quite a lot of problems. And now because we've visualized the data, if we'd like to turn the map to the correct um, uh, angle, we could see that there's a real hotspot over here and over there. And those would probably be areas of industrial um, zones or actually where people were still using coal to do their heating. So this is another patch which is uh, really nicely and clearly documented which will help you to get latitude and longitude data and map it. So that's the end of this first tutorial. I hope it's been educational and informative and that you now know a little bit more about how to get your hands dirty with um, data sets on the internet because using them in cables really isn't that hard once you know how to get them in. So if you've got any questions or comments please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.